All praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai, Barsham Rakakwadash, the one and to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on whether Yahweh cast away his people or not. All right, did God cast away the Israelites and the Israelites, a nation that no longer exists on the, in, on the earth? And the answer to that question simply is no, he did not. Right, but this world right now that is very hypocritical is proving that they don't even believe that God cast away the Israelites. Because a lot of you Christians, when you heard the Hebrew Israelites say that we think we're the Israelites, you said, oh, none of that stuff matters no more. We're not Israelites and none of that stuff no more, right? But then there's a group of people in the land of Israel that are saying they're the Israelites, right? And all of you people are standing up to try and fight for them and saying, yeah, they do deserve this and they do, or they don't, this shouldn't be happening to them, saying, yeah, they are the chosen. And I've seen the comments from several of you people saying these things, man, and I've seen it spoken out of people's mouths, right? Yet when it came to us saying that we're the Israelites, you wanted to say, no, the Israelites are done away with. So you got to pick which one do you believe? Do you believe that the Israelites are done away with? Or do you believe that those people in the land of Israel are in fact the Israelites? But either way it goes, you have to stand on one belief, man. You can't try and say one thing to us and then say another to them. Now, let me get a prophecy or, or a scripture, in fact, to prove that the Israelites are not done away with. Right, this is Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Thus saith Yahweh, which gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves are of roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith Yahweh. If heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done. Say, if you have so, people, when we, we've said we're the Israelites, they've said, oh, no, nah, that's done away with. We're all Israelites at the end of the day. But And then, yet, if you ask them if they're an Israelite, they'll say no. I've heard people say that everyone's an Israelite, which is ridiculous. How can everyone be an Israelite when everyone is not even from Shem? How can we all be Israelites, man? And then when you really understand what people are saying, they just don't want us to be Israelites. Because it's not even with these people, it's not even a thing about skin colour with, with who they want to be and who not to be Israelites. Because they'll happily accept an Ethiopian person saying that they're an Israelite. They'll happily accept a Malaysian person saying that they're an Israelite without asking for DNA tests or any of these proofs, without saying, was you born in Israel? Can you speak Hebrew? They won't say none of that to these people. I've never seen any of these Ethiopians get asked, can can they speak Hebrew or what their DNA test results say? Or any of the same things that they ask us when it, when it comes to them being an Israelite. They just don't want us to be. And that's because we really are. We really are Israelites, man. And this world knows that there's a heavy price to pay and a heavy judgments to pay for all the things that's been done to us, especially if we are Israelites. They know that there's a heavy price to pay for all of that, man. And there is a heavy price to pay. And the seed of Israel is not done away, man. Just like it says here, if all the he if the heavens can be searched out, right, and the foundation searched out, then God will cast away, then Yahweh will cast away all the seed of the house of Israel. But let's look at what a prophecy says, right, that was also spoken of by Jeremiah and see if the house of Israel of the seed of Israel is cast away. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 7, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Right? So that's clear that the seed of the house of Israel is going to be gathered from the north country, which is in North America, and everywhere else that they've been scattered, and then they're going to be taken back to their own land. Now, some people will say that this has happened already. I'm not one of those. This has not happened. Because if you ask those people in the land of Israel, what's their greatest salvation? They're going to say ancient Egypt. That's what they're going to say. They ain't going to say 1948. Because after 1948, wasn't there a thing called Nakba? Was it, didn't that take place? So it couldn't be 1948. Because they're still complaining now. Over there. But why is that happening if Ezekiel 36 has been fulfilled? Like some of you lying Christians have made tried to make out is the case, man, which is not the case. 
right? Now, some people say, oh, that's the that's only the Old Testament that you're saying that. Well, let's see what Paul said, since all you Christians love Paul so much, right? Let's see what Paul said about whether the Israelites were cast away. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, have Yahweh cast away his people? Yahweh forbid, for I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So the Israelites are not cast away, man. They're not cast away. The Israelites still exist. The seed of the house of Israel is still on the earth right now. And we say, right, Israelites say that the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are those people. Now you say that those people that came from Germany, certain parts of Russia and all of these things, you say that they're them people. Okay, say that then. But we're going to see which, we're going to see who prophecy is going to be on the side of, right? Because it don't say no in the Bible that all these countries and all these different people will be fighting to help the Israelites in the end times. In fact, since the captivity and since the salvation that they were going to receive was going to be similar to ancient Egypt, it was going to be more so that they was going to be refusing to let them go so that they can serve their Lord. Right? And if Ezekiel 36 has been fulfilled like you people say, then shouldn't the Israelites be keeping the laws perfectly? Shouldn't they have a new mind and a new heart? Shouldn't they be? Shouldn't every single Israelite be saying that we keep the laws? There shouldn't be none saying, oh, I'm not practicing. They shouldn't be sneaking off, talking about going to a restaurant, kind of have some white steak, and then they know that that's a cold word for I'm going to eat pork. Or can I have some white steak? You mean pork. They shouldn't be trying to do that. They shouldn't be having the largest alphabet community parade over there. They should be doing such a simple, basic thing as keeping a beard on their face. They should be keeping a beard on their face. That, that's natural. That not, It takes more effort to cut it off than it does to grow it. So they're making an effort to sin in that regard. Let's carry on. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27. If they, if they was back in the land for real, this would be happening. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Are they doing that? And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God, and I will also save you from all your uncleanliness. Is alphabet community activity uncleanliness? Yes, it is. It's filthy. It's dirty. It's disgusting. But they're all about that. They're all about that over there, man. But they're supposed to be cleansed from their uncleanness. Are the women over there committing adultery? Are the men over there committing adultery? Yes, they are. That's uncleanness. And among us who say we're Israelites as well, there's uncleanness among us too. But we ain't saying that we've fulfilled Ezekiel 36. They are. And you Christians are saying it too. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 28. And I will shout, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn and I will increase it. And I will lay no famine upon you. Now the people are writing and complaining over there about several things. The land can't even grow crops there properly. They've had to do specialist techniques that you don't have to do in several other places in the world in order to, for certain things to even be able to grow. But why would they have to do that? Shouldn't it grow easier in the land of the chosen than anywhere else? And it would if the chosen were there. But they're not. They're not over there, man. The real Israelites are not over there. And everyone, anyone that says that they are, you're a liar. And you can't explain why the prophecies are not fulfilled in regard to the Israelites then, and you can't explain this. If you say that the Israelites are over there, right, we'll explain why they ain't doing this then. Explain this. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. All nations ain't flowing unto whatever them, them people in the land of Israel are talking about. All nations didn't flow into what they're talking about. In fact, anytime any nation says anything against them, it gets called anti this or anti that. That's all they can say. People ain't flowing over there to hear what they say. 
in fact, no one's allowed to say anything to them or against them because they get cancelled. And then, and then the proof that we're the chosen for real and they're not is that with all this stuff that's going on in, with that war over there, how comes everybody wants to know what we've got to say? How comes they're demanding that we pick a side because we're the chosen? And it's in their spirit, really, that they have to want to hear what we've got to say, man. It's in their spirit that they want to hear what we have to say. They always want to know our opinion on things. And for all you people that don't believe that, even Andrew Tate is an Israelite, man. I don't care what religion he wants to claim. His father was a so-called African-American. And the real and, and African-Americans are really Israelites, man. In particular, the tribe of Judah. That's why all you people are always following after Mike Tyson. That's why you people love Anthony Joshua. You love all the, you, you love Dwayne Rock Johnson. You love all these rappers. You love all these Latino, Native American. You love all these um, African American rappers. You love them. When you go to the concerts, who's the main people there? You see you heathens. It's all you people that are not Israelites. That are always following after these people because you're, it's naturally in your spirit that you want to follow us, man. That's you ain't following after them in that regard. After those other people claiming to be the chosen. You ain't following after them trying to copy their ways. You're trying to get money from them. But you're not trying to copy their ways in terms of how they actually interact with the world. You ain't doing that. Because they're not really the chosen, man. Isaac had two sons, right? The first son that came out was Esau. The second son that came out was Jacob. And you people in this world right now are following Esau. Right? You're following after Esau in terms of who is ruling after you and whose philosophies you're picking up. But your spirit really wants to follow after Jacob, which is us. That but you're really following Esau, man, right now. Let's carry on, man. Verse 3. Isaiah 2 and verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come here, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. Now, are, are they doing that? Are they making us follow after their ways and follow after their paths? No, they're not. They ain't even following it. They're not even following the path themselves, man. The president of that country can't even manage to keep a beard on his face. But then he's got the nerve to try and quote Isaiah 60. How about you grow a beard first? Before you start trying to think you think you can quote prophecies, how about you just let your beard grow out? How about that? Instead of trying to make out like you think you're deep and that you know you don't know anything about prophecy in terms of telling the truth, you know how to lie. Verse three, and many people shall go and say, "Come here, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths." For out of Zion shall go forth the law. And the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. But they don't ever speak about the word of the Lord for real, man. Whenever you hear any of them talk, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, I'm not really, I'm not really religious. I'm not really practicing though. Or I don't really speak too much about the Bible. They don't even believe that the Messiah's came yet, man. They're still waiting for him to come. But if you read the prophecy about the Messiah, which I believe is in Daniel's ninth chapter, he had to have came already. Because there was a timeline and when he was going to come to the earth. And that timeline's gone. So he's came already, but they don't believe it. They think, oh, we're still waiting for him to come. So according to them, we're still 2,000 years back in time. They're all over the place, man. And any of you people that know anything about the Bible, you wouldn't be able to get interviewed by any of these people and they're trying to ask you questions about this and ask you questions about that. Because you'll be able to just say to them, according to the Bible prophecy, are the Israelites supposed to be in the land yet? Well, um, I'm not really here to talk about the Bible. Then why are you saying that they deserve their landing? Isn't that because of the Bible why you're saying that? The reason why people are saying that they deserve that land is because of the Bible. Right? And so lock here one second.